welcome my amazing viewers thank you so much for joining me on my program once again i appreciate you wherever you are connecting from if you have not subscribed to my channel please kindly subscribe to my channel click the notification bell so that you be notified each time i upload a video you will be among the first to receive it thank you so much and remember this whenever you look my video whenever you watch my video share the video to all platforms share it to family and friends share it in your whatsapp group so that people can get information on what is happening in the contraption called nigeria mainly against the beer france against the Duduans, against the indigenous people in the country called nigeria i try as much as possible to set the record straight i don't preach hate speech i don't speak against people i set the record straight the only important thing i do here is to make sure that the plight of the people remains on the front corner and the world will know the true story of what is going on in the country called nigeria remember they will always change the narrative. The government will always try as much as possible to use the conventional media to change the narrative. But that I will not allow. In this platform, we set the record straight and we say it the way it is. Not preaching hate speech, not by talking down to anybody, but setting the record straight and bringing the information to the front corner and letting the world know the exact situation of things. Each time you watch my video, you can equally go to the comment section. Put down your comments. Say it the way you feel it. It's so welcome. You can criticize if you so desire, but do it constructively so that we can be able to learn from one another. That is why I'm here. And now, I'm going to share with you a very important video. I hope after watching the video from the beginning to the end, you're going to enjoy the video. And you continue to stick around and be able to enjoy the rest of videos that are going to be coming your way from time to time. Thank you so much for coming. Today, the video I'm going to share with you is a very important video. The way we are doing things makes no economic sense. It makes no political sense. Huh? Socio-cultural sense. It makes no sense at all. There's, there is no ramification. There is no way you can look at it where you can rationalize the way we are operating. That we can put that up. I mean, just last year. Just last year. When again the the schedule for dangote refinery coming on stream was uh, threatened you know covid 19 happened shipments were delayed and some of the loans were due for repayment npc invested 2.7 billion dollars in dangote stocks why would they do that <laughs> I mean, you can you can just imagine that 2.7 billion dollars it was a public something now 2.7 billion dollars could have built a refinery to actually meet all of our domestic needs and that of the sub-region. Now, what we have, what we are doing, is that we are enabling the emergence of a of not a monopoly, an oligopoly. A, just that is it. That means that these things will now be decided. I don't go to. Whether we have fuel or we don't have fuel depend will now depend on whether dangote refinery is functioning whether dangote refinery has a problem with his workers and then there is a strike you know all of this is what we will now have to be contending with do our laws can our laws checkmate such power? our laws ought to i mean fundamentally the constitution is very clear the constitution of nigeria chapter 2 uh section 15 of the constitution is very clear it says that the commanding heights of the economy shall be in public hands and then it further empowered the national assembly to from time to time make laws that would define and describe which sectors of the economy constitute the commanding heights of the economy which are then not supposed which which are supposed to now be public sector led which is not supposed to uh, we're not supposed to allow this the same section the 15 and section 16 also says that the the purpose one of the one of the things that government will do is to ensure that wealth is not concentrated in a few hands all of these are in the constitution but they will tell you that chapter two is not just disabled even though that chapter every to open figures nigeria earns about 28 billion uh dollars from this okay but because of our failure to make our refineries work the refineries that we have that we invested money to actually build because of our failure to make that work we spent 78 billion dollars annually to import fuel to import refined products i mean who does that that's stupid corruption is a claw for the progress to achieve it has incessantly frustrated noble achievements despite abundant human and natural resources. 
Today we will be reviewing the effect of corruption in the Nigeria state as well as in the public service since the time of Prime Minister Default Nadeo. We are not doing this alone. We have reached out to a resource person to help us analyze and propose solutions to how we can get ourselves out of this hard We will be discussing with someone who is in charge of National Secretariat, the People's Authority Political Movement, and the head of Praxis Center, Mr. Jai Garcia. Please join us. As the federal government had given to Dangote, it would probably would have amounted over 10 trillion before to put figure. Yeah, yeah. Saying 10 years, waiver, freeze mm -hmm. and all of that. Why would we not? Why are refineries are more important? Why would you look the other way? Yeah, and actually, allow them to be an investor, a businessman, take care of his yes. business, and be abide by our own law rather than have waiver. Yeah. Because now he becomes too powerful oh, yeah. for a country to control. Absolutely. Now, a de facto impositor of whatever happens in our country, why would we spend that much money for the man rather than get our moribund refineries? Out of the shackle that it is, and, and and that really is a question that beggars the mind. It's it's because because the way we are doing things makes no economic sense. It makes no political sense, huh? Socio cultural sense. It makes no sense at all. There's there is no ramification. There is no way you can look at it where you can rationalize the way we are operating. That we can put that up. I mean, just last year, just last year, when again the, the schedule for Dangote Refinery coming on stream was uh, threatened. You know, COVID 19 happened, shipments were delayed, and some of the loans were due for repayment. NPC invested $2.7 billion in Dangote stocks. Why would they do that? <laughs> I mean, you can you can just imagine that two point seven billion dollars. It was a public something. Now two point seven billion dollars could have built a refinery. Two point seven billion dollars, with all of the other wafers that we have given in the past, that could have built a refinery. So it's like you said, let's say ten trillion naira, ten trillion in any currency. Trillion in any currency is not a small amount of money. Absolutely. And certainly not Naira. Because we are not talking about Sifa. You are not talking about... You are talking about... So, 10 trillion Naira is a huge amount of money. Yes. As at the time that Dangote Refinery was coming and we were giving all these waivers to... People forget that there is also Bua Refinery coming up in Akwaibo. Uh, it is 300,000 uh, barrels per day capacity, so about half that go to the refinery. But it's essentially the same conditions given to that go to that is also being given <laughs> to, to him. So between the two of them now, they will control uh, cement, they will control sugar, they will control uh, salt, they will control wow. flour. Uh, they, 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 will con they will now also now control oil fuel, uh, uh, for uh, petroleum and petrochemicals. So, and that's the other argument that we make about having building, having domestic refineries, and having a public sector led. Be because PMS is not the only product you get from crude oil. Huh? Diesel is not the only product that you get from crude oil. Okay. Associated gas is not the only product that you get from uh, crude oil. There are some other secondary uh, products uh, that are petrochemicals that, that become the basis for other industries, plastic, aluminium, okay, fertilizer. Even some of our kinetics for this. Yeah. So, all the all the other major raw materials that you need for all of these other things are also derivatives of the refining process. Why would you put that in the in the and in, 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 in the hands of one person or two persons in the country? So that's why you see there is no refinery in the world that you say oh this is a refinery. Every refinery is always refinery and petrochemicals. 
You understand that? Because is that that's the process. So you ask yourself, why couldn't we have done quite things differently? Was it not possible, for example, when we just like they created the Niger Delta Power Project? Eh? Why why couldn't we have just in, let NNPC? Why, why is it not possible for us to build three new refineries? Modern day, modern day refineries. Forget this one. They are, they are, so we have been saying sell this ones. Sell it to whoever wants to buy it. Because you see, the, the challenge is that they tell us that these things they deliberately make them moribund. You know that's what they also said about Nepal. That's what I'm saying. They deliberately make them moribund so that they can buy it off cheap. And then they strip the assets and sell them for much more than what they bought they bought them for so that's that's why they are all making this argument that these refineries cannot work and the rest of that okay but we can we could have built new refineries with 10 trillion naira. we could have built new refineries three really new refineries in six years because the average um construction time for a refinery for an average medium 200 to 400 thousand barrels per day capacity uh, refinery uh, is 18 months 18 months from 18 months to 36 months maximum we've had seven years we'd have done three we would have done three we could have built three new refineries with all of these monies that we are spending on it and by now we would have addressed the challenge that we have around uh, around this now we wouldn't have to be using the money that you don't have that you think you are any to now pay for a refined product yeah. so that that's the that's the real challenge that we have and that's why we need to rethink our economic policies we need to rethink our governance policies uh we need to we i i, I think we need to first of all the link right? as a country the link take a pause is it proper? for nigerians to mm. bank on that rather than government-owned refineries i mean we, we we have always been some of us have always been very clear uh, for example energy is such a, is so so much of an important uh, uh resource and factor of production that we think that it should be public sector led i mean some of us have been very clear about that. it is our responsibility that is making uh, enabling the likes of dangote and it is actually not just irresponsibility it's, it's actually also impunity because it's not just that we are irresponsible in managing uh, public uh, investment and public uh, this thing, but that we are actually creating a neighbor environment for private sector led uh, development in this area. That's what we did with Dangote Refinery. Okay, we gave all the tax holidays. Is is in lucky in the export for a free trade zone okay you know the meaning what, what that means is there we, we, we guaranteed uh, some of the insurance and everything that that uh, as a country and all of that we did all of these things including even guaranteeing uh funds uh yeah that uh, that is sourced, which we should have done for ourselves so that's what we we ought to have done but now we have now allowed a single individual and a single company okay enabled and empowered that individual to build a refinery that has a capacity to actually meet all of our domestic needs and that of the sub-region. Now, what we, have, what we are doing is that we are enabling the emergence of a, of not a monopoly, an oligopoly. Like a, just, that is it. That means that these things will now be decided by Dangote. Whether we have fuel or we don't have fuel, depend will now depend on whether dangote refinery is functioning whether dangote refinery has a problem with his workers and then there is a strike you know all of this is what we now have to be contending with do our laws can our laws check meet such power? our laws ought to i mean fundamentally the constitution is very clear the constitution of nigeria chapter 2 uh section 15 of the constitution is very clear it says that the commanding heights of the economy shall be in public hands and then it further empowers the national assembly to from time to time make laws that would define and describe which sectors of the economy constitute 
the commanding heights of the economy, which are then not supposed, which which are supposed to now be public sector led, which is not supposed to, uh, we're not supposed to allow this. The same section, the 15 and section 16 also says that the, the purpose, one of the, one of the things that government will do is to ensure that wealth is not concentrated in a few hands. All of these are in the constitution, but they will tell you that chapter two is not justiceable. Even though that chapter, every that has 12 clauses from 13 to 24 each of those provisions those clauses and their sub provisions begins with the phrase the government shall this person shall shall is not a, a, a no it's not negotiable it's an obligatory verb shall means it must be done otherwise it would have been the government may in which case it is then subject to discretion but he says shall, and yet they claim it is not justiceable, and they do all of these things under this thing, or under this uh, something. So, and apart now, uh, to, to, to then go back to Dangote refinery again. Uh, the, so, if people are saying that um, they're having uh, a refinery, a domestic refining capacity in Nigeria will not solve our problem, then that argument will be wrong. The, the challenge is whether it is public sector led or it is in private hands. That because if you have domestic refining capacity. What you have done is that you have cut off several costs. You have cut off the, the logistics, the cost of transporting crude abroad, abroad. the cost of, uh, that's the freight now, the cost of the insurance in transporting it. You have cut off the cost of refining it abroad. You have cut off the cost of bringing it, bringing it up, freighting it back, and the insurance that covers that. You have cut off all of that. Then the cost of demolition and the upload. And the, you have cut all of those costs off. So no matter how you see it, even if Nigeria's government sells to any local refinery, including a public refinery, uh, crude oil at the international benchmark, eh, there's no way that prices will not end up being reduced. And there's no way that prices, that it will not be possible to then control prices more appropriately than we are doing now. Because the challenge now is that all of those costs are there. And then the amount to what we now call the landing cost. Now, so the landing cost is there. Now, the landing cost could be manageable to an extent. So, in other, um, I mean, could when I say manageable, let me say could be could be stable, could be stabilized over a longer period of time. Eh? If our uh, currency was not weak against the dollar and the value was not falling against the dollar frequently so if you if you can maintain a, a stable value of the of the naira eh, then you can maintain a stable price uh, or based on landing cost for a long period of time but it will still be higher than if you had produced locally so we now have double jeopardy what fella calls the double double jeopardy we have the fact that all of these costs that we could have cut off we are having to pay for it, and then our currency is unstable against the, the, the dollar. So, even if landing cost remains the same for eight months, over an eight month period, but during that eight month period, the value of the naira is depreciating. Eh? Then, in reality, what government is paying in terms of differential between that landing cost and the pump price, we keep rising. Subsidy will be the same subsidy. Yes, it, and it will keep rising. Even if land cost remains the same, the international prices don't change, and land cost remains the same. Okay, so let's assume land cost is two hundred naira uh, per liter, and it remains the same for one year. Okay, but if the value of the naira to the dollar keeps depreciating, if it begins the year at four hundred naira and ends the year at six hundred naira, at the end of the year, what you would be paying, what you would call subsidy, uh, in December will be far much higher than what you call subsidy in January. And that's just one, one uh, factor. But we are not talking about the other factor of the, that the international landing cost cannot remain the same. Because the most important and significant con contribution to the, international, to the landing cost of refined product eh, is also the price of crude on the international market. We cannot be controlled by us. And so every time we are happy that... Uh, uh, we we can now sell uh, instead of fifty fifty dollars per barrel. It's not ninety dollars per barrel. <laughs> that ninety dollars per barrel means we are going to pay a higher landing uh, cost. We are going to pay a higher landing cost. 
Because those who are refining it abroad, okay, we factor in that increase in cost to all of their uh, these things. So that's the challenge. And so why we can't simply under why uh, government economists and political leaders cannot simply just understand this, you know, beggars the mind. And it's simply it's simply greed and impunity. If if some people are not making money from the present situation and they are not placing their selfish personal interests above the collective interest of the country, we cannot be in this situation. It's not possible for us to be in this situation if this is not happening, if, this, if people are actually not directly benefiting from this. And that's why we say that there's a huge, you know, uh, corruption uh, in that area. A co corruption that benefits people to the highest level, that benefits most parties, ruling parties in Nigeria depend solely on this uh, largest from the from 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 the petroleum sector political parties the major political parties depend on this largest and all of that and so unless we tackle that as citizens so to go back to that question now it's only citizens that can rescue us from this problem and that means we have to take our destiny into our own hands start asking questions start holding people accountable this this is an election year thankfully start asking the hard and the difficult questions you know and try and, and pin politicians down and political parties down to give concrete answers, not uh, ambiguous responses. Okay, what are you going to do about the refi uh, about refineries? Simple. How many? How long will it take you to have this to have that? Because it seems like everybody, particularly this APC government, from the moment the government came into office in 2015, if you look back now. At the, at the trend, at the tendency, it seemed that its petroleum policy has been dependent on one thing and driven by only one thing, Dangote Refinery. They have been hoping, and that's why they have been giving all, all the support possible to Dangote. They have been hoping that just let this thing just come on stream, and that's what they have been doing. So when they came in, when they came in, they said three years. That was the projected uh, period for Dangote to come. Then well, everything that they have said. Now they said it went initially before uh, before the president now thought that okay, let me just push the problem to the next uh, government. When initially they were saying when they put the when they said that by June they, 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 there's no longer provision for subsidy in the budget that was approved and that was signed by the president. Eh? It was again also based on the projections of Dangote Refinery. Dangote has come out to say that the Dangote Refinery will come on stream in the third quarter of uh, 2022. That in fact, by the third quarter of, 20, of this year, that means starting from July, uh, that they will be able to, they will start operating at 540,000 barrels per day capacity. Their full capacity is actually 650,000 and that they will gr gradually increase over 2023. That by the end of 2023, they would have been able to up, to up, to operate optimally. So you can see that even that that plan, that program was based was still based on Dangote refinery. So Moribon contracts based on it as a follow-up to all of this. It's all about the drafts. It's all about um, representation, and it's all about a breach, mostly in our contract terms. Moribon contracts have people that develop in this country. Please, how can we? And the solution get out of all this power from power, energy, a lot everything. You know, so, how can we do it? And nobody's ever sanctioned, and, and, that, and that's part of our biggest challenge. Uh, so you so it, 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 it will shock you to note one thing this, this, this was even from the Ministry of Justice itself. So, let's even forget the red uh, contracts, economic contracts, eh? treaties that we enter into as a country, treaties that are negotiated and are binding on us that we enter into as a country. You know that these treaties, that if it's a convention on uh, ecology, Ministry of Environment takes the lead. Eh? If it's whatever, any agriculture, the different ministries take the lead on it. And at a point in time, as of 2018, when this government was launching the national police uh, uh, for the justice sector policy, the Minister of Justice was saying, and the Attorney General of the Federation was saying that, look, that there are treaties that these countries have entered into that the Ministry of Justice is not aware of that we have entered into them. 
Many of the cities where we have entered into, the National Assembly is completely not aware of it. Yet, for any treaty to have the force of uh, law domestically, it must be go to the National Assembly for for its for its yeah for its uh, con, uh, concurrence, and then for justice to properly archive and file it so that they are and interpret it. And then in negotiating the treaty, the Ministry of Justice must be represented from the very beginning, so that national interest can always be you know uh, but that's not done so that's even for treaties not to not talk of uh, uh contracts contracts are simply just done by people one one ministry is doing a contract uh, for an economic uh, program and project that would affect another ministry but that other ministry is not even involved in that contract because this this contract is domiciled with this ministry so it's the way our government operates, it's the way governance operates generally. The fact that everything is in silos. So everything is a desk. I mean, that's that's our that's the most ridiculous thing we, we do in this country. Every important thing is a desk. And you have a desk officer, a desk, a unit, desk officer assigned to it. Okay. So now it becomes a problem of that desk and that desk and that desk officer, not the ministry. Eh? And not the government. <laughs> so, so that's a challenge. And on, so, unless we begin to operate gov uh, government as holistic, as the same, then all of these loopholes and gaps will not be seen. They will be they will be overlooked, eh? and we would enter into trouble at the end of the day. Because so, some of the judgments, for example, the sixty-two billion dollars. Uh, Again, if you go back to the oil sector, that where the uh, international oil corporation was supposed by by a judgment of the court, Supreme Court was supposed to be owing Nigeria. Okay, now this is two billion dollars is from what? Is from the fact that the law, the, the our law, our own law, the petroleum before the petroleum industry act, the petrol the petroleum act, the previous one. Our law, and then the joint venture agreements and the production JVs and the, uh, the production sharing agreements that we we had signed with these companies was clear about the fact that after a, a certain period of time, I think it was ten years. That after ten years, okay, the uh, the unit cost would be reviewed and reviewed up to meet the uh, current situation and the rest of that so that was not done twice that's for over 30 years this yes enjoy enjoying the stable practice. and so when the court because uh, uh, one of the governments actually went to to court to try to claim this thing when the court did all of these calculations it amounted to that if you had reviewed this when you were supposed to have reviewed it and you had collected this what they were owing was 62 billion dollars so that was the basis of that judgment. Now, so the issue is, but you did not review, although it is actually, you can say it is a debt, because the law has not changed. What did not happen is that our government did not uh, implement it, exactly enforce it. But so the law is there. So you can do that. So the court ruled on the basis of that technicality. The issue now is, okay, so you would expect then a serious government to sit down, having won a case on the basis of technology, to now sit down with the IOCs and say, okay, so that, now let's negotiate. Huh? We can still be friends. If we can be friends, so what part of this can you pay back? That can be done. Yes, you can negotiate it because you can do an out of court settlement for that. You, you, you have won the technical basis, the legal basis the that they owe you. Okay, so you can then negotiate, okay, so how much can you pay back? Okay, how much can be deferred? And then say that starting from now, that we are doing this negotiation, these are the new rates. That's what that's what a reasonable business person should do, isn't it? If you win a judgment like that, you do sit down and say, okay, negotiate the terms and say, okay, can we negotiate the debt? So, for example, when the international oil corporations say we are owing joint uh, cash uh, cash calls for the joint ventures, that's our own part of the uh, annual budget that the Nigerian government is supposed to do. We can still take it from here. So give us the balance. You, you understand what I'm saying? So you can clear your debts with them and say, okay, give us the balance. So there are a number of things that you could have done with that. But we are not doing and we did not do. Or is it judgments about uh, pollution? 
facts have not been uh, 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 judgments of the courts have just been ignored and they have not been enforced and nothing. So these are the things. These are the these are the big challenges that we have, and that's what is going into all the contracts. So look at the contracts with the the loans we are taking for infrastructure development, for instance, with clauses that are not very clear in terms of what you are actually putting as your collateral. Uh, you, you get it. What is it that you are putting in? And that what, if you fail, what happens? What, what happens? Okay? And we all know the reality is that most of those kind of contracts, if you are not vigilant, eh, are always constructed in a manner to favor the person the who, expatriate. The expa yes, the expatriate. So if you are not vigilant, then you will not see all of these things. And that's, that's why uh, when some people, uh, when the news came out about uh, NTB Airport, uh, Uganda's uh, International Airport, and some of the challenges with it and the rest of that, that, okay, look. And then the National Assembly said, okay, they, have, they, they had not even looked at the terms of the loans that they had approved. How do you approve loans without looking at the terms and the conditions for repayment? You know? And our law is clear. The Fiscal Responsibility Act is clear. When you, when you, you see, when government is applying for a loan, it must uh, get the approval of the initial assembly. But it says, it's not just that, it says that the government must also attach a repayment plan. So if you are going to attach it, it means that you would have uh, attached all the supporting documents. That's what it means. And then the initial assembly will be able to scrutinize before approving. So it means that all of these things have just been done. They've been approving loans in breach of the law, in breach of the constitution, and everybody has just been going on. So, um, case in point, sir, is um, yeah. I, I'm looking for a job. I can't get a job, so the, this is, is a civil society job is available. You become livelihood. you a livelihood. So, so for those for those who enter civil society simply because they're looking for a job, eh? uh, it takes it's easier to be compromised. It's easier not to be nonchalant about um, integrity issues and the rest of that. Because, uh, look at it, it's not your passion, it's not your conviction. You, don't, you, you probably don't even believe in what you are doing. Just like you have, even with professionals, people, people get a job. Eh? But because that's not the job they want to do. They don't think they're actually working. They think they're marking time. And so they don't pay attention to, to that job. So exactly. So people become teachers because they don't have other jobs. And then in becoming teachers, they don't they destroy, they destroy the exactly. They don't pay attention to it. They don't do I mean so they are not building themselves over as teachers. They are not delivering what they need to deliver to the to the kids because for them they're just back in time. I just need to earn a living now. My dream job is still so they don't see it as a job. How so, society, yep. sorry, to correct the absolutely, of the absolutely, it, it, it is, it is possible, it is possible. So, so having laid that uh, foundation for context for how we see all of these things, the other thing you also have to understand is that uh, there is also the other civil society that is deliberately sponsored by people in government and and politicians who just sponsor organizations to counter uh, credible organizations so there's also that so those ones those ones again you can also then argue that well if they had decent jobs they will not lend themselves to be used in that manner so having established this now we can say so how do we correct this no, it's it's easy but my, but my argument is this and we did a study last year for Center for Democracy and Development. We did a study where we look at the impact analysis of uh, civil society organizations in Nigeria. And one of the things that we came, that we, in terms of, uh, that look, we need to salvage the integrity and credibility of the civic space. Because everything wrong that is done in that civic space eh, adds to the ammunition of those who want to constrict the civic space. So they, 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 they use it as a basis to attack everybody. So we said we need to do something about it. And one of the things that we are proposing is that it is, it is high time eh, that credible civil society organizations, those that still remain, credible civil society organizations and credible civil society leaders actually also become responsible leaders 
people start coming into political space. No, even before that time, within that civil society space, huh? is it possible, for instance, in civil society, for these credible civil society organizations and credible uh, uh, civil society leaders to come up and say, for this sector, okay, for this sector, this is our code of ethics. Okay. Hmm? Agree a code of ethics. Throw it open for people to debate. This is the digital age and just that. But agree. And the reason why I'm saying credible civil society organizations and credible leaders is because they are the ones who then have the the leverage to actually command that kind of uh, authority. Get it done. Get a minimum code of ethics done and code of practice. So there is ethics, there is practice. So practice is your operations. Ethics is your attitude in that your, what you what you bring into that operation have minimum standards and then say that voluntary you know you sign on to it voluntarily okay because you can't force anybody to do that you sign on to it voluntarily but then what you must then insist particularly with the development partners because government may be a little bit hesitant to do that because government is sponsoring some people so is to insist that when donors want to give funding, eh? you have to have signed on to the voluntary code. Which, so you can be transparent. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, and it lays down procedure, what you need to do, and then the procedure for discipline. If, so that voluntary code would be, so you must have signed on to it before you can get funding for, for, for people, for or or, that, or, because, or before you can even get the sub grant from somebody that we have provided fund for so if we do that if we begin to do that eh, we'll begin to at least at the level of professionalizing the sector and having professional ethics hmm? you will be able to have those minimum standards in place and then it's nation the biggest priority right now is to clean up our politics and clean up governance so if we decide to do that then we can all agree even if we are not directly contesting. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you are notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you. And remember this. Bye-bye. See you again. Thank you.